What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State. I'm feeling very warm today, and I don't mean physically, I'm just my personality. I'm feeling warm today, I'm feeling giving, I'm feeling like the world is a nice place. I woke up, and you know normally in the winter when you get out of bed it just feels freezing when you get out of bed? I got out of bed and I didn't feel that cold, and I like put on my coat and I put on my pants and I expected to feel hot after that, you know, because it wasn't cold, but I still put on my clothing, it still all feels good. I don't know, the sun is shining, it's been like two weeks of non-stop storming here in California. Just a monsoon-like downpour for the last couple weeks, and the sun is shining through my window right now. The beam hit me, like, right through in the eye, through the slats in my little blinds, but I didn't even care. Like, it's just, like, it feels good to be alive today. And so I'm happy to have you here with me. I really, really am happy to have you here with me today. We're going to hang out, and let's do a couple little conversations with these people around our location. I don't think we... Did we do anything with her? I don't remember. Either way, she's on our away team now, which works out pretty great for us. I'm going to go to sleep, and I'm going to hope, actually, that Getz decides to come in the morning, because then we can swap out. I've heard that Getz is really, really good. If he does come back, my most ardent hope is that... Okay, so we only lost 12 morale right there. That's not bad. Had we had the generator up and running, we would have been in better shape, but we, bought, we brought home fresh food, right? We've got negotiation skill bonus for 8 morale gain. We brought home a lot of stuff that time, and we're still barely making. We've got one disgruntled ally. That's, I think that's going to be Elaine, I believe. And we've got three people right there. Uh, we really need to work on somebody having a better mood. No electricity. Oh, the minus 50 really hurt us. Okay. So the minus 50 was straight up nasty for us right there. we got something to discuss. Folks have been safe so far, and maybe it's luck, or maybe you know what you're doing, but I don't want to take any chances, so I say we make our safety here a priority. That's understandable. What do you propose? We need to beef up the defenses here. Reinforce the fence so that nothing can get in. I'm not even talking about the infected or dead or whatever we're calling them. I want the fence strong enough to keep everyone out. We should focus our efforts on securing the materials necessary to get it done. Okay. That sounds good. I'll make it my top priority. Good. If you need help getting it built, just let me know. But we need to get it done within the next two weeks. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to give the yard a once-over. No, I actually I agree with Vic in this case. You said you were going to help people. I told you I couldn't let any more people die, but that's all that seems to happen around here. I refuse to do one more goddamn thing if you're just going to get us all killed. Whoa, why is she upset? Why is she upset right now? Is it because she's disgruntled? Oh man, she's like losing her shit right now. And We actually had a good day yesterday. What's going on? This is like out of the blue. You have a lot to think about, and I'm gonna give you, we can either tell her to do it on an empty stomach, we're gonna dump her at the crash site, we can tell her to see the fucking door, or we can say, you have a lot to think about, I'm gonna go with that one since it's tactful. You have a lot to think about, and I'm gonna give you one generous day to think about the alternative. Fine, well, that's a surprise, I'll think about it. I don't know what's wrong with her right now. Why? It's got to be because she's disgruntled. Deodorant and sleeping pills, but I don't have either of those. I haven't seen any of those drop anywhere, so unfortunately she might like lose her shit and like fall off the wagon and kill a bunch of people or something. Is Max still out here? Why is Max still out here? This is weird. I don't know if he's bugged or what's going on. Yeah, you can't click on him, so... Something weird is afoot. Something very weird is afoot. Let's go ahead and talk to Davis. Actually, we'll check. Let's go make sure that the work board's all right. We're going to keep our group as it is right now. Did I forget to do my inventory management? Ah, shnikes here. I'm going to make a cut. Okay, sorry about that. I knew I broke the episode off to do, like, one specific thing, and I knew I messed it up. Inventory management is complete. So let's go ahead and swing back on in over here. We'll take a look at the job board, and we'll see if we can get things fixed. What do we... Oh, they're working on the watchtower. That's right. All along the watchtower. I forgot about that. So how do we reinforce the fence? The fence looks like it's doing pretty well. Fence repair. There it is. So the fence actually is pretty beat up. If we wanted to build something else, where is that at? So we need that to have electricity. We lack a lot of the skills required. Is it ever going to give me, like, somebody who knows how to... Is it ever going to give me somebody that knows how to do all this stuff? Or does the main character have to do this? Because thus far, nobody has the skills required in order to do, like, any of the major mechanical stuff. They're all, like, one point too low, basically. We also have nobody with any skill in science, which is problematic. 
Yeah, nobody has any science skills, so I'm a little bit worried about this whole thing. Either way, I'm gonna leave them working on the watchtower, I guess. They've got time- wait. Hold on. Help with the watchtower. What are you guys doing? Oh, Elaine Martin's out? She's done? Okay, so that leaves us with three people. We are reasonably well stocked on stuff, so I think in this case I'll probably bring... Since she's our medic, that means that I'm going to have to bring Renee. Alright. Well, let's grab Renee. And we'll bring her with us on this excursion, because we do need a healer. We need somebody that can actually accomplish stuff. So let me go to the shelter storage real fast, and we'll get Elaine kitted up for this exploratory adventure. She actually doesn't have much in her med kit. But I can fix that with Elaine. Let me go ahead, and I'm going to strip her gear right now, too. Just in case, and no... That was not a car-related joke. We'll put that in there. There we go. And we'll give that all to Renee now, because obviously, if she decides to take off, I don't want her to take off with a bunch of our gear, which is a possibility. So we'll throw that on her. We'll throw that on her. We've got that there. Everything's looking good. We'll throw that on instead. Let's get rid of all this armor, because obviously it's too heavy for us. And arm accessories. Do we have anything for the arms? We do not have anything for the arms. She's got weapons already. I needed the other med kit. Where is that at? There it is. We'll give her the other med kit. Let's throw Renee into our party now. I should have done that while I was down here and it would have saved me a little bit of time, but whatever. It's all fine. It's weird that there's still like mac and cheese and stuff out like over here from the lunch counter. Our lunch counter was way bigger that the bigger than that in school, but then again, my school wasn't small like this one. My school had like 5,000 students. There was a lot of people there. Like ultimately, there was a ton of people there. Let's see here. Since she's unavailable, we will take Renee on board in our party. And so there's our four. Let's go ahead and see if we can find anything to get done today. I am excited about the prospects of leaving this place one more time and maybe seeing if we can face another day. But yeah, we need people who are specialists. Like, we need people who are good at science. We need people that are... We have a decent guy at Mechanicry, but we need a scientist very, very badly. Where I can get one, I'm not sure. Never been to Lano Residential. There's an old neighborhood. Chunk Brothers Factory we made it to. What I may attempt... Let's see, Dan, downtown San Soba, or San Saba? San Saba. An alley, Brady Pharmacy, the Bullseye Store. We got that one taken care of. The Wicked Lily sounds like a bar or something. Let's head down the road this way. And we've got an encounter right here. An undead attack. Maybe they need help. Well, let's see what we can do here. If they do need help, then we're going to get out there and we're going to help them. Nah, they're looters. Looters with guns. Looters with sizable artillery. And they're making too much noise, too. This is going to snowball on us real, real fast if we don't get this taken care of. However, there is a loot node right there. Whether or not it's going to be worth it inside the confines of this episode, I can't tell you. But for right now, I'm going to let the zombies walk up on them and we're not going to help. I'd say let them go. Their portraits are such that I don't trust them. Kind of like spiral into a position where we may be able to charge them in just a second, but I think they're looters. Put him up front, as always, so that he's going to be the tank who's soaking the damage. That one's lost his spine and is now running. How to lose a spine, I'm not really sure. I think it has something to do with hanging out with Predator too much. That seems like a great way to lose your spine. And in fact, I may allow the zombies to have them. I'm not actually concerned about zombies, even in large numbers. But they're making so much noise that we may get zombies from the edge of the map. That's the other thing that I'm kind of worried about. I just don't want to get shotgunned point blank. That's really my worry at the moment. I'm okay with the small arms fire and the 38s type stuff, but I'm not really down for getting clipped with that shotgun. Alright, let's go. Oh man, there's a bunch of them coming in off the map. You guys need to stop shooting. Y'all are about to get us in some very, very large quantities of trouble. He's about to back into another zombie. Yep.
he managed to fend off that zombie right there. I'm not sure what my best course of action is right now. Oh, and that guy's done and infected too. Okay, so he's going to come back as a zombie in just a second. But I think we can still handle this. There's actually not that many zombies. There's quite a few, but it's not too terrible. I need to see if I can maybe save this guy and see what happens there. Alright, so a whole bunch of resist. They're making a lot of noise. Like, we need these gunshots to stop. It says it, though. Never mind. It says they're nervous looters. So... My goal in this case becomes self-preservation. I'm going to keep Elaine out of it. I'm sorry, Renee out of it for right now. However, that's not going to stop me from sending in the Doug. Oh, I accidentally hit the space bar because I was trying to skip Doug's turn. Damn it. All right, well, that's unfortunate. My own ineptitude has managed to get me in trouble once again. We need to start thinning some of these zombies. Otherwise, our adventure here is going to be very, very short. Tried to paw at us right there like a cat does. Just like, eh. It, was, it looks a little half-hearted. No joke. It looks a little half-hearted. That guy's done. Yep. There goes one of the looters. One less looter. He's now going to be one more zombie. I may actually try and deal with the looters first. That one's sitting there just singing some kind of zombie folk song. That's fine. At this point, you can't tell the difference between that and Bob Dylan. On this side... I'm going to step in, see if we can get rid of one of these zombies at the bare minimum. Oh, man, with a double miss right there. With the double miss. Taking that fail up to a whole new level, my friend. Taking that fail up to a whole new level. It's okay, though. I'm not mad at you. Oh, wow. That zombie's got a chin on her. Okay. There we go. Get rid of that one right there. Do something useful. That guy's going to keep unleashing the Daco, which is going to cause more zombies to come at us. But my hope is that these zombies will be occupied with him, maybe. He's got what looks like a hand axe right there. And he's got his turn coming up in just a second. And he may use the Chaos on Vic as an opportunity to strike at him. If he takes a swing at us, I'm going to take him out on the next turn. Because we can't risk somebody being up in here with these kinds of weapons. And there's the bite right there. Yeah, he's going to come at us. That hand axe, though, it doesn't look like his strength is very good, so we should be fine, I think. It's Vic's turn. Officer Castillo! Show him how we do it in San Antonio. There it is. The San Antonio Slammers, what I like to call it. And now on this side, keeping the medic out of it for right now. Get rid of this zombie. Fairly sizable combat, all things considered. I think this guy might be. He's badly wounded. Okay, well, just lay into him then. There we go. He's now down. Step two. Oh, he's going to come back, any. All right. So there's another one down. Oh, and there's a bite right there, unfortunately. Luckily, it doesn't get infected. If you're at really, really low health, that seems to be how you get infected. They're busy pulling this guy's guts out and killing him. Dawn of the Dead style. I remember the first time I saw that scene in Dawn of the Dead, like the one from the 70s, not the new one. The new one sucks. The one from the, the one with fast zombies, I was like, all right, so this basically has nothing to do with the real Dawn of the Dead. Never mind. But anyways, the old Dawn of the Dead. I remember the first time I saw that scene as a kid where the guy got his guts ripped out by the zombie while he was trying to use the, the, I think he was at the mall. And he was trying to use the blood pressure tester. That's what it is. And then the zombies attack him while he's on the blood pressure tester. They rip his arm off and it's still in the in the little loop. <laughs> and it's like, Dee! and it says go to a doctor or something like that. Oh, man, I love that movie. I could watch that movie on repeat and never get tired of it. It's one of the greatest like horror films of all time, easily. It's fantastic. There's just nothing not to love in that film. It's so campy and it's so just like real and genuine. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. They don't make horror films like that anymore. I've always, I maintain the stipulation that the horror genre is dead. The horror genre has been replaced by the shock, like, gore porn genre. Like, no real horror is made anymore. It's all just shock value and jump scares anymore. Which I think is sad, because I do think that horror movies have a lot to offer the world. Sometimes there's a lot of fun to be had in being, like, scared of a film or having a film that makes you feel uneasy. But nowadays, everything, ever since Saw, it's been all downhill. Although, honestly, I would actually say it started with some of the slasher films. Although, some of the earlier slasher films... 
weren't that bad. They were still like I'll still watch like Halloween. I still think Halloween's okay, and I I would never talk down about Halloween or some of the old slasher classics. But still, I think it's been downhill since. Yeah, I'd say that's probably what it is. I th I liked the first Saw movie, but after that, horror took like a weird turn, and nothing was the same in it anymore. It was just all kind of like gore porn from then on. That's just my feelings as a major horror fan. I really, really, really like horror films, and unfortunately, I don't like the direction that horror has gone. It's because making legitimate horror is actually, like, difficult and takes effort, and people don't like to put in effort. How many bullets do you... Oh, that's Vic? Okay, I was carrying around the wrong person. All right, that's fine. We should check these trees, too, because occasionally these trees have loot nodes on them where you can get, like, some apples or something. The devs like to hide them all over the place. Okay, so we're good right there. Well, yeah, I think horror is probably a dead genre as it stands right now. It's just kind of... Well, it it's I guess I wouldn't say it's dead. It just didn't go in a direction that I find enjoyable like at all, I guess. There you go. We should probably see if we can uncover something over this way. If we're going to go down to the old neighborhood, which I think was my plan. I'm going to follow the road right here. Really, we hit nothing, huh? Well, damn. All right. Well, let's go to the old neighborhood and see what we can find here. Hopefully it won't be too rowdy. I hope somebody hasn't converted this into like a road warrior military base for civilians or something. I'm not really stoked about attacking people's borders here. I just kind of want to take a look around and see if maybe we can find ourselves some extra loot. The other possibility that we may run into in this place, I've never seen this map before, so stick with me. Things could get rowdy right here real quick. That door's unlocked. We can't look through windows, unfortunately, because I would try and do that. Is there anybody in here? Anyways, as I was saying, the big risk that you run into in these residential areas is that you come across survivors who are not necessarily hostile, but they're not necessarily friendly either, and so they block off like an entire loot node, simply based on the fact that they're like, get out of my house, even though it might not be their house, like there's like a dead body in the corner and they don't explain it. Bunch of kitchenware in here. I don't know how useful those are, but... Oh, look, the back door's open too. That's weird. Okay. Feeling increasingly nervous about this whole thing. Either way, we'll bring back some reading material. Anybody in here? No. Well, data item. Okay, so that's good. See what books we can find. Maybe get a game system out from over here. Might be kind of good. Yeah, a portable games. Why would you have a portable game? Maybe, ah, never mind. It's. Never mind. I'm not even going to go there. That's not where a portable game system goes. That's where the Xbox goes, man. That's where the Xbox. Oh, this door is locked. Now comes the question, do we crush it down and it might be full of zombies or something? Or like, do we take this slow? There's no other way in there, so without a mechanic to use the lockpick skill, I think I'm just going to bash it. We are making a lot of noise. Nobody in here. I wonder why it was locked from the inside if there's nobody in here. Because bedroom door is always locked from the inside. A bedroom door that locked from the outside would be kind of creepy and also sort of like... I don't know what to say about a bedroom door that locks from the outside. That's got like a distinctive Cinderella type feeling going on with it that I just don't feel. We can go down the stairs here. Doug, are you stuck? Alright, then we're going to use you. Let's go down the stairs then. Ooh, there's a basement. Wow! Oh, wow, it's a survivalist cache. Why are people stuck upstairs? Alright, well let me see. People are stuck downstairs too. Great. A wine shelf. I don't think people will mind if we bring home a little bit of the cab. I think they'll be happy about it. Okay, so a couple of wine bottles. Definitely think people are going to be stoked about that. We've got a storage shelf back here. With a tennis ball and a fishing rod. But Jenny's probably going to have some gas for us in it, right? A lot of gas. That's going to be his maximum... Is that a tree trimmer? And a sickle. Okay. Obviously, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think we're going to be able to carry that on out. It's just too much right now. But who's down in the basement with me? Oh, he is. Okay, so you grab some of that stuff. Grab stuff out of the laundry basket, too. We've got Ultra Bright, and we've got towels. Okay. I'll probably turn on the generator after today because we're in a pretty good spot when it comes to all of our goodies. So, are we, like, bugged out here? 
Oh, man. I didn't save before I left, neither. Okay, good. Whew. I got nervous there for a second. I was like, I didn't. The one time that I didn't save before I switched zones, this is going to happen. It's going to happen to me. I knew it. If it weren't for bad luck. But nope, it all worked out. It's fine. The system is just a little bit odd. Let's check this field for any fruit trees. Some of these look slightly promising, but you never know. Oh, there's a dead guy over here. Oh, a bunch of dead guys. Bullet holes through the window. Looks like there was a battle over here or something. Are they looters? They look kind of lootery. They've all got like hoods and stuff, but not all of them do. This guy was killed with a lockpick. Huh. I bet somebody's about to come out of the house and be like, Hey! And like freak out on us over here. There we go. Now that we're all full up. I'm going to leave people here. I'm going to walk up on the... Fr that guy was running around with a jar of mayonnaise. That was his goal, huh? Running around with a jar of mayonnaise. This building is looking like it's probably occupado. Is there a back door? There's a side door. I would say we should consider the side door, especially since that one doesn't seem to work at all. Okay, team. Everybody front and center real fast. Also, let's get a band-aid on, on Vic. Hey. Hey. Everybody come up here. I gave the signal. Alright, so there we go. Everybody's up here with me now. Let's throw a band-aid on Vic, even though it's a little bit of a waste. Okay. Let's have a look. Bud. Is he a preacher? Who is this guy? Hmm. Well, let's leave the episode right here because I think I heard the mailman knocking. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for giving me your attention. What the? Wow, I went out of the ordinary right there. You see what happens when I try and do a weird outro? My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State. I appreciate you giving me your attention for a little bit, and I had a lot of fun talking with you, hanging out, playing video games. I will see you next time. Take care out there, everybody.